Today, we're walking through everything that is wrong with the Ninja 400. Hello everyone, it is your favorite bike-destroying, meme-loving, disaster of a human, Yammy Noob, back once again to deliver unto you insatiable little urchins the motorcycle content you so desperately crave in order to sustain your existence. Today we're trying something new, something that is apparently all the rage on YouTube, the video essay, where I will take my usual sardonic tone and apply it to a genre of video that deserves a better writer than me. I'd like to walk through a journey with you today in understanding everything that's wrong with the Ninja 400, and we'll do so not in an exhaustive review, but rather a holistic view of the bike in three parts. Part 1, why the Ninja 400 is premium mediocre. Part 2, the idea of compromise versus settling in relation to the Ninja 400, and Part 3, the Ninja 400 compared to its rivals. It is also not lost on me that in trying a new format of video, I inadvertently turn this into a list. I think I'm doomed to wander the ninth circle of hell creating list after list, and then making a list about the list, it's kind of an Ouroboros of list making, a snake eating its own tail in perpetuity. Before we begin though, I wanted to thank the good people over at Vincero Watches once again. They've been a proud supporter of the channel for almost a year now, which is longer than than any bike I've owned. These watches are some top-notch stuff at some incredibly affordable prices. You guys might have seen those minimal looking watches that are around everywhere. Well, guess what? These are not like those. These watches are weak as hell. Vincero, crazy strong. I'm talking like Arnold in the 70s strong. These watches are on the juice. These are classic timepieces that aren't going to wreck your bank account, but they will get you noticed. So if you're like me and you think dropping more than $1,000 on something that tells time is a little silly, you should check these bad boys out. They've got tons of five-star reviews and a style for every guy. For a limited time, you can get 10% off your order by using the code YAMMY at checkout. That's YAMMY at checkout. Tell them your YAM sent you and get yourself set up. I'd like you to understand something as we embark on this journey. The Ninja 400 is a perfectly fine bike. There's nothing actually wrong with it. I mean, I assume. I've never ridden one. I don't actually ride. I've never even seen a motorcycle in person. They have two wheels, right? Very scary. Anyways, the Ninja 400 is perfectly serviceable. It's a motorcycle that's going to get you from A to B reliably and will allow you to have fun while you're out there. You have to remember, motorcycles are a lot like dogs. They're all good boys in their own way. I've yet to ride a bike that I truly did not like. They're all fun. They've all got a twisty bit on the right that makes the PP -pee very hard when you test it, and they do that cool thing where they lean in corners and make you question every boring hangout you've ever had with those people you barely call friends when this was waiting in the world for you the entire time. Part 1. Premium Mediocre when confronted with the abject reality of finances, most of us sit around conducting the same sort of boring cost-benefit analyses that humans have been doing for generations. What's the best bang for my buck? How can I maximize my utility given this cost constraint? Understanding how to shuffle numbers around on a screen so you get the biggest one is what defines most of our lives and ascribes meaning to the things that we do. Obviously, you are faced with a distinct set of constraints when selecting your first motorcycle, albeit self imposed, but if you're halfway responsible, they will likely mirror the constraints that others have chosen before you. I'm assuming you're not getting a Turbo Hayabusa as your first bike, even though you totally should. You've checked off that it has to be a certain CC because if you go above 600, you will die. That's a given, that's not even a possibility. If you sit on a 600, you will die. Most motorcycle shops have insurance for this specific phenomenon as people come into their storefronts and sit on 600s and instantly die. It's like when you try to fight a gym leader out of order in Pokemon and you get absolutely annihilated and you have to go grind in the tall grass. You've also checked off that it must be new since you are a decently well-to-do young human who has started earning a decent amount of money. And now you're met with a very familiar decision tree and that leads you into the Ninja 400. It has the most displacement in its class. It can be bought new. It's Japanese and reliable. What could go wrong here? It's the optimal decision, the only decision. However, the Ninja 400 is the Chipotle of motorcycles. Yes, it is food. Yes, it is cheap. It will fill you up. But does it move the soul? Does it girdle your loins in any way? I think not. The Ninja 400 is the epitome of premium mediocre. Let me explain this phenomenon with a quote. Premium mediocre is cupcakes and froyo. Premium mediocre is truffle oil on anything and extra legroom seats in economy. Premium mediocre is cruise ships, artisan pizza, Game of Thrones, and the Bellagio. Premium mediocre is food that Instagrams better than it tastes. Premium mediocrity, as the name implies, is the upper echelon of what could be understood as middle-of-the-road goods and services, but it's not middle-class fancy, a concept that strives to achieve the veneer of fancy without the cost. Think knock-off Patagonia jackets. Premium mediocre casts a long shadow over most of American life, and in my opinion, it's the end game of late-stage capitalism, where people strive to achieve the look and feel of the American dream they can barely afford. Enter the Ninja 400. The Ninja 400, 
the nicest bottle of wine at an Olive Garden. It's a bike that says, hey, I've got the disposable income for a motorcycle, and I'm gonna treat myself, dammit. It is premium mediocrity distilled into a two-wheeled motorized flavor, a motorcycle that denotes a sporty intention to a layperson, but one which doesn't offend with 200 horsepower, unforgiving ergonomics, and an exhaust that gives a jackhammer a run for its money in terms of decibel crushing strength. And don't misinterpret what I'm saying. It's not a poser's motorcycle, because it's still a motorcycle, and at the end of the day, anyone that's on one is still committing the act of riding, and that deserves respect. And I say that without an ounce of sarcasm. But it is a bike that's saddled with a certain image, like any motorcycle is, which, depending on the success of this video, I will cook up plenty more. Uh, can you say Ducati Biscotti? Part 2. Settling and compromise with the Ninja 400. There's an important linguistic distinction I want to make because settling and compromising is often used interchangeably, but I think it warrants a bit of exploration, mainly because the Ninja 400 is settling versus compromising. When someone settles on something, it implies a level of agency being withdrawn. It denotes that there's a winner and a loser in a situation. For example, you settle when you know deep down you could have done better. While the Ninja 400 is an optimal choice from a budgetary and decision constraint. It's a choice that denotes settling because you know you could have picked a bike that's either more exciting or cost less or maybe a blend of both. This isn't to say that choosing an Ninja 400 is a lazy choice, it just implies that you've settled on it. The Ninja 400. I could have done better. A compromise, on the other hand, denotes a win-win. When a compromise is reached, it means that two parties are satisfied with their decisions. In a really rudimentary example, if you wanted to ride motorcycles but your significant other would prefer you drove a car, a three-wheeled vehicle is an example of a, a theoretically perfect compromise since you've met in the middle of a decision matrix of two versus four-wheeled vehicles and assuming that both parties are perfectly rational, this should satisfy both those constraints. With a Ninja 400, there's not really any compromising, it's still a motorcycle, you're still getting into the hobby, it's just a difference in horsepower, CCs, and ergonomics versus the alternatives you could have chosen. The Ninja 400 exists simultaneously at the intersection of settling for something and going full YOLO. The Ninja 400 is the sort of thing a young man buys when he's tired of hearing how other people are making choices for him. It's a symbol to prove to others that he's a master of his own domain, how mother won't be able to control his whims anymore. Mother can't stop you now, Jimmy. She can't reach you when you're on the steel horse. Mother thought you were a craven, pathetic little creature your entire life, that you'd be walked on forever, never asserting enough dominance in your meek ways to put yourself out there in the world. But now you own a motorcycle, and everything is different. Part 3. The Ninja 400 in comparison to its rivals. I want to make something abundantly clear. I want to be expressly transparent about this. There is no functional difference between the Ninja 400 and the other motorcycles in the beginner bike class. I understand that there is an entire industry predicated on the fact that young men aged 18 to 24 are googling terms like Ninja 400 versus R3 or Ninja 400 versus CBR 300. This type of comparison shopping is what makes content creators and advertisers gush with pleasure as they research your habits based on long tail keywords and hit you with retargeting ads that follow you around like herpes on every single social media platform that your valuable little eyeballs land upon. Yes, I know you will DM me asking which one you should get. Yes, I understand it seems like a cripplingly difficult choice to make, but I implore you, these bikes are basically all the same. I owned an R3, I've ridden a Ninja 300 and an RC390, they're all so similar it's not even funny. What you need to do is decide on which one you like. Since you're watching this video, I'm gonna assume it's the Ninja 400, and just go for it. Since it's your first bike anyways, just get it. You've already chosen the premium mediocre setting, so just commit to it. Now you might say, but my sweet loving Yam who has done nothing but sacrificed his youth by making these videos for my own enjoyment while I use the restroom, I'm telling you guys I know exactly what you're doing when you're watching my videos, what about those precious extra cubes I get when I go for the 400 instead of the R3 for example? In my opinion, it's the difference between a cheeseburger and a bacon cheeseburger when you're looking at the same class of motorcycle. Will you notice a difference? Sure. Will it be enough to make you feel like one is a rocket ship instead of the other? Probably not. It's a nice bonus, but it's not going to make you feel substantially different. Motorcycle displacements only really matter when you start looking between classes of bikes. A Ninja 400 versus an FZ07, for example, two common beginner bike choices. The FZ is going to feel way more torquey. 
but 320 cc's versus 399 cc's, that's not a big gap. Now feel free to pummel me into the shadow realm for espousing such blasphemies in the comments section below. In short, the Ninja 400 isn't a bad bike, quite the contrary, it's a great bike that appeals to a huge swath of people who are interested in riding motorcycles, and Kawasaki is going to sell an absolute metric crap ton of them. But that line of thinking is the same reason why signature French bread at Kroger sells out every morning, because it has the pretense of something valuable, but it's a mass-produced product devoid of any character. The Ninja 400 a cautionary tale about what happens when practicality supersedes emotion. And when it comes to motorcycling, much like life, what does it all mean if there's no emotion or passion? Thanks for checking out this video guys, this is a new format for me and it was fun stretching my creative muscles for a bit. I'm planning on doing more videos like this in the future, if you have any suggestions for future videos feel free to drop a comment below, I do try to read all of them. If you liked it, remember to smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. I make the highest quality motorcycle videos this side of the Mississippi and will imbue them with unnecessary pretentiousness and you will like it. Thanks and I'll catch you next time. Fact. Yami Noob is known for some egregious crimes against motorcycling. However, his biggest offense is enslaving an entire race of mole people who serve at his beck and call to pump out more list videos. Goodbye. <laughs>